God's been good. Whether you think so or not, He's been good. I'm thankful for a loving Heavenly Father this evening. What an amazing morning it was this morning. I was talking to Brian. I said I, I said I was so excited for the bus route kicking off and and being a part, being as much part of that as I could, and then excited for all of our first responders that came this morning, being a part of all, all that that I could. I got home at lunch, and I don't remember much between lunch and and when I had to come back. <laughs> My wife will attest to that. I normally uh, will sit and watch a little bit of football, and then I'll study a little bit more for the evening and. Uh, my wife and my youngest daughter, Addison, they went to go take a nap. Next thing I know, they're walking back in the room. And I don't know where time went. <laughs> so, but what an amazing God we serve and what a blessing it was this morning. And I'm thankful for each one of you being faithful, being back in the house of the Lord tonight. And I'm looking forward for what God's going to do uh, this week in our hearts and lives. There's a lot going on. Ladies, if you're going, if you're coming to that thing tomorrow night, for the ladies' Bible study, you need to make sure you sign up. That way, if if uh, my wife needs to call ahead and, and reserve one of those little rooms, we can do that uh, over at Golden Corral. And, uh, you know, that's one of those great eating places. I'm tempted, you know, I'm tempted to follow and just kind of sit on the other side, you know. But uh, uh, <laughs> I encourage you, if you can be to the, come to that, ladies, uh, you know, make sure you let her know or just sign up and... Make sure you're there for the fellowship, the fun together. Uh, it builds the fun and fellowship together as the ladies of the church. I think it'll be a blessing to you as well. And, uh, but I had a great time with the first responders on the way out the door this morning. They, uh, a couple of them just wanted to stay and talk. And uh, that was fine with me. And uh, we talked and joked around and had a good time. And I want to thank everyone that brought their equipment and things here for our decorations. Some of them had to leave because somebody had duty tonight. They had to take their, their, uh, their, their outfit with them. Uh, but I want to thank each and every one of you for, for bringing in uh, gear and things to, to, to use as decorations. It was well done. Thank you, Mrs. Baker, for taking the time to coordinate that and put that together. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful this morning. What an honor. And uh, they, the, several said they left honored. They felt like this was, this was a good thing. And I hope they'll go back and talk about us a little bit. And I want to be here next year when we do something similar for them. And uh, listen, it's about getting outside of these four walls and reaching out in their community and seeing how we can be a blessing to them. What can we do to help them? What can we do to just encourage them uh, in their duties? And uh, I want it to be an encouragement to you to do the same in your own daily life. Try to find people you can encourage. You can make cookies. Go bake cookies and take them up to the... Take them up to the police station, the fire station. Take them something. Don't put anything in it, but just take something up to them and uh, be an encouragement to them and, and help them and uh, be a blessing to them. Tonight, I wanted, I'm going to go back to the passage I preached on last Sunday night. We're talking about training a Timothy. And, and we talked about if a man desire the office of, of a bishop, we talked about that desire, that desire, they desire a good work. And we talked about the fact that God calls it a good work. And it, it is a good work. And, uh, but I want us to go back to that passage for just a moment tonight. Because I want to challenge you with something. And this is, if you will, somewhat uh, on a personal note to, to each and every one of you here. And uh, I have entitled the message this, Hold Your Pastor to It. Hold Your Pastor to It. Now let's read that passage again. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Let's, let's begin reading in that first verse. When you find your place, let's stand for the reading of God's Word. 1 Timothy chapter 3 will begin there in verse, uh, verse 1. And we'll read to verse 7. And with that mindset, with that title mindset... Hold your pastor to it. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it says, This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient. Not a brawler, not covetous. 
One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Father, tonight I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for the truths found there. I want to thank you for the obligation laid out for the bishop, for the pastor, for the shepherd. And I pray tonight that I would challenge your people to maintain their responsibility towards the office of a bishop. And Lord, I pray that with a, just with a humble heart tonight, Lord, that you would protect me and guard me. But would you set up a hedge about me of the people here in your church that they would also help guard, help watch. Christ, then we pray. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. At first, as I was studying, it sounded selfish to me to even bring up this topic. But I want you to understand, I don't want to fail. I don't want to be a, 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 another uh, pastor that fails. That All across America, there are pastors that fall every week, every month. There are churches that close every week, every month, because a man of God has, has, has done something unbiblical. He's gone his own way instead of the Bible way. Now let's look through this passage again, and let me remind you of the qualifications of a pastor. Of, remember, uh, Timothy, Paul is training Timothy, and he's about to leave Timothy, and, and sent Timothy into these cities, and he says, look, uh, you're going to go, and you're going to set up, and you're going to set up the leadership in these churches. You're going to make sure the leadership in these churches are appropriate, they're right. Well, you need to know the qualifications of these. Now, these are God-given through, through Paul to Timothy. They're God-given. I understand that. But Paul here is doing the writing, and he says, Timothy, make sure of these things. Now, look at this, that second verse. He says, blameless, nothing sticks. The husband of one wife. Now, this is, the Bible literally it means of the one wife. In other words, not... Uh, there are some that want to say this is one at a time. No, this is one and only one. Vigilant, careful, noticing problems, looking, looking ahead of things, uh, pro looking at problems or signs of danger. Sober, meaning having or showing a very serious attitude or quality of good behavior, behavior that's approvable, a behavior that God approves of. Given to hospitality, a generous and friendly treatment of visitors and guests. Hospitable treatment, taking care of those that are guests in the house of God. Apt to teach. The ability to relay information to, to another with understanding. Not just to give a lot of information. I could stand up here and rattle off information all day long, but if I'm not able to teach it to you or teach it to, uh, if, if the preacher is not able to relay it so that they can understand, that's not apt to teach. Not given to wine. In other words, wine's not controlling him and he's not, he's not giving himself over to strong drink. No striker, one who strikes literally, uh, one who fights with their fists. Not greedy of filthy lucre. In other words, desiring money, figuring out ways, conniving ways to make money or to get money that is obtained dishonestly. Patient, willing to wait, willing to invest in people over the long term. Not a brawler. The word brawler is here is just a fighter. One who's, uh, you know, uh, I'll fight you with a drop of hat. In fact, I'll throw the hat down. Let's go. Not a brawler. Not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house. He has his house in order and he handles it well. It goes on, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Uh, literally has taught his children well and he, he's taught them to submit to God and to submit to their, their authority. That doesn't mean they're always going to do right. That doesn't mean they're always going to be perfect. 
No, that's not what he's talking about. He's, he's one that is constantly trying. His desire is to train his children to do right. And he's striving towards that. Because he asked this question, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how can he rule the house of God? How can he do things in the house of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Not a novice, not a first timer. He continues on, moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. Talking about having a good testimony in the community. Having a good testimony in the community. Those outside of the church. And tonight we want to, uh, and, and looking at these... You know, there are some of these things that, that are a constant, you know, uh, the pastors should be constantly working towards, training towards, to do better on. There are some of these he does, he messes up once and he's done. We've got to make sure though. Go back to the title, hold your pastor to it. Let's, let's take some application of this tonight. There are these qualifications that the pastor are laid out. And, and I've been uh, listening to some missions classes and things and how they would go about training. Think about this. You, you're a missionary and you're traveling to a foreign country to, to some people that have never even heard the gospel. And your goal with that is to start a church but not to stay there, to go to, to train a national pastor so that you can go and start another church. And, and several of these missionaries, in fact, uh, several that, that I've been talking to have started two or three churches at one time. And they're out to make sure uh, that they're training national pastors and they're trying to teach them what are these qualifications you want to preach, you want to teach, you want to pastor. What do we do? How do we do it? What are the qualifications? And here he goes through these qualifications and he explains them and he lays them out to Timothy. He says, Timothy, if the man is going to be a, a pastor of the church, this is what he's going to be required to do. But here's where, I, here's where we come to, the, to the, the purpose of this message is, I need your help. I need you to hold me to it. See, I'm not perfect. That was your chance, babe, to say amen. Okay, <laughs> I'm not perfect, and I don't claim to be. But as the pastor of this church, I have responsibilities. I have obligations according to the Word of God in my life. Your job is to help hold me to it. Turn to Matthew chapter 18. This is an unfavorite passage. It's a passage of church discipline where, where the Bible teaches us what is church discipline? What do we, what, what's the, how do you handle people that are walking away from God? And I'm begging you to hold me to the truth and the Word of God. To hold Brother Brian, to hold Brother Travis to the Word of God. To hold our deacons to the Word of God. I hope you get that tonight. We need just as much help. Uh, we need just as much help tonight doing our job. We, we, had, we have first responder Sunday tonight. We had uh, another first responder walk in. I'm not trying to embarrass you, Carter, but Carter walked in tonight. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, we're happy to have him tonight. We'll, we'll make notice of him in here in just a little bit. But can I tell you tonight, they don't do it on their own. Brother Mike, you know, served in, for how many years, Brother Mike? 42 years? 25 years. I just... Doubled it. I like to just make you... I was trying... You were supposed to say, yeah! Served as, in the fire department for 25 years. You didn't do it by yourself, did you? Did you make mistakes along the way? Many. <laughs> I was waiting for what he was going to say. He made many. But you had your crew to make up the difference, to help pull you... You know, listen... 
when these first responders are going into a, a fire or something, look, there are plenty of mistakes that can be made, and you're just praying uh, what, what the requirement. You don't go in alone, do you? No, you can't go in. Why? Because if something happens, it could be something that happens in the fire or something you do just by accident, and you need someone to pull you out. You need to have somebody there to protect and guard you and help you. That's what I'm begging for tonight. I'm begging for each one of us to understand our responsibility to help each other stay in the book and live by the book. That's our jobs tonight. When the Bible speaks uh, here in Matthew chapter 18, he says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. This is verse 15. If he shall hear thee, Thou hast gained thy brother. What is the whole purpose of of this type of discipline or or reaching out uh, and trying to help somebody? What's the whole purpose? To gain your brother. To win back the relationship between you two. That's the purpose of it. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be as unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Look, he, there's a progression here. If, it says if he trespass against you, if he wrongs you, go and, and, and talk to him face to face. And then if he doesn't hear you, then go get two or three more people and bring them with you so that it says that every word can be established. In other words, uh, out of two or three people, hopefully the story will be straight. You know, everybody will speak the same thing. Then it says if they won't hear, if they won't hear that group, then take it to the church. If he won't hear the church, then see him as a publican. In other words, an outsider, someone not associated with the church. And he goes, Verily I send you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Oh, the biggest question Peter had. Lord, okay, you're telling us how to, you know, to win a brother back. But how many times should I be forgiving? I mean, you, you know, Lord, um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out and I'm going to grab a high number. Lord, should I, should I forgive him seven times? I mean, come on. We're spiritual here, right? Should I just forgive him seven times? I want you to understand, the, if you follow the, the Greek language here, he's talking about in the same matter. In the same instance, the same problem. He says, seven times? The Lord says, no. Seventy times seven times. Huh? 490 times in the same act. Forgive him. Win him back. Win him back. So I give you application tonight. I give you just a couple of points here. Actually, there's only two, I think. What a shame, right? Y'all don't want to get out early tonight, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if y'all heard that, but I had someone go, yep, sure do. Number one, we're talking about here in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And I said, my first point of application is hold your pastor to the same standards. Hold your pastor to the same standards. Here he's training Timothy and he says, Timothy, you need to have these standards as a pastor. You need to train up men to have these same standards. But can I tell you this morning, standing before you as your pastor, I need you to hold me to these standards. If I fail in these standards, you better do something about it. You better have the gumption, the the notion, the backbone to do something about it. 
hold your pastor to the, to the same standards. Now, this is not saying, saying this anyway, but be respectful and loving just as you would another friend, another brother. The goal, remember the goal is to win the brother back, right? To win him back. The goal here is, I don't want to fail you. I don't want to fail God. I don't want to fail this church. And I'm just simply going back to the passage where Timothy's training. And look, uh, we've got to be diligent about helping each other stay in the book and by the book. And I'm asking you to stand your ground, know God's word, and hold your pastor to it. Do it in love. The whole principle of Matthew chapter 18 is not in an angry way. It's not in a uh, backlash way. It's not in a way to tear him down or to tear anyone down. It's to win them back. I had a friend named Andy when I was younger and we used to, you know, I used, we used to think we were cool. We rode our BMX bikes everywhere in our neighborhood, up and down the hills and around the corner. He's, uh, I would have said at the time he was my best friend. Well, you know, as young kids do, you got to have a lemonade stand, right? I mean, it's hot and it's summer and, you know, that's a big neighborhood and there's plenty of kids in this neighborhood. you got to have a lemonade stand. So I have, I put out a, a table up at the front top of the hill. In fact, I built it myself. It was a little wobbly. And I uh, had a big old gallon pitcher of lemonade and had these, these uh, mason jars as my, my cups. You know, I wasn't thinking very smart. Here I have, I got these mason jars. And uh, I'm just selling lemonade. I'm not selling the mason jars. What, they're not reusable? <laughs> I got to thinking about that the other day. I was like, oh, I didn't, that, I didn't think through that. <laughs> and uh, here we are, and, and, and we're getting, you know, it's, we've sat out there for several hours during the hot heat of the day, so we're sweaty and nasty, and we hate, we're hating life at this point. Whose idea was this? We've made about four bucks, maybe. You know, every cup was 25 cents, so we've been there for a while. We'd actually done decent. We covered our costs for lemonade. And uh, so we're hot and thirsty. We're about to close up shop, and... And here I am, you know, tearing everything down, and, and uh, it didn't take me long. I think I kicked, kicked like two boards, and it collapsed. And, uh, and Andy's over there, and he goes, I said, well, when we're done, we'll split the leftover lemonade. Well, he started guzzling it and guzzling it. I wasn't very happy. I wasn't very nice. I chunked a board at him. It hit the glass like that. And it put a gash right across his nose right here. Needless to say, we weren't friends at the time, all of a sudden. We went from great friends to enemies that quick. Now, I wasn't the super Christian at the age of nine, okay? But I knew that he was my best friend and I wanted our friendship back. It didn't come right away, but I tried to win our friendship back. And see, that's the purpose of Matthew chapter 18 is there's a friendship there, there's a relationship there and winning, gaining it back. But see, someone needs to know, someone needs to be bold enough, strong enough to stand and say what's right. And do what's right, no matter what. Are you with me tonight? So hold your pastor to the same standards. Now look, I'm not preaching this because I've done anything, okay? <laughs> That's not the purpose of this. I'm preaching this. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm getting all sorts of comments up here, it's great. I'm preaching this because I don't want to do anything wrong. And as I read this passage, as I prepared for preaching last week, over and over my heart broke because I know there are, there are young men 
that graduated with me, that went into the ministry, gun, guns blazing, went into the ministry, went into the pastor, and now no longer are in the ministry at all. Because there weren't friends that stood by him and made sure he did what was right. They made, let's just put it this way, dumb decisions and did dumb things. Because he, because he didn't go to his church and say, hold me to the word of God. Young men, church is destroyed because of them. And I, as I was studying last week and what Paul was training Timothy and the fact that it's a good work and it's a great work and I wouldn't do nothing else. To do anything else would be a step down from this position for me. Because God called me here. God called me to be a pastor. And I'm not bragging. I'm not, that's not in a, that is in the fact of, look, I'm afraid to do something wrong. I'm fearful of it. So therefore, hold your pastor to the same standards. Hold him to these standards. Number two, forgive him like you would anybody else. Look, can I tell you, I'm going to do stupid stuff. Brian's going to do really stupid stuff. And you don't even want to know what Travis is going to do. <laughs> we work at Jedco together on Mondays. And I won't even go there. Because one of our bosses is in the room. <laughs> But I want you to understand, we're, we're, and I'm preaching it. Listen, I'm preaching this not just for me. I'm preaching it for these young men as well. See, I want, to hold, I want these men to be so successful. I, I want them to go well beyond me, way beyond me in their ministry. I want them to be, I, look, I want them to be known of. I want people to say, oh, you got, you got Brian preaching for you? You got, you got Travis preaching? Yeah, they're on our staff. But to do that, we're going to have to rally behind them and make sure we protect them. Because we're just stupid boys that like to do dumb things. And we call it cool. Listen. Brother Mike, you didn't ever have any, anybody do something crazy or dumb under your command, did you? Never. Didn't think so. Didn't think so. I want you to understand tonight, look, how many times should I forgive someone? Well, obviously, obviously when, we, when we're talking about here, we're talking about one point. And I'm obviously talking about there's going to be some things that if I were to do it, Brian were to do it, Travis were to do it, another preacher were to do it, they disqualify themselves from the office of pastor. But there's some things in here that, like I said, I'm constantly working on. Apt to teach, being able to teach people. I'm constantly working on that. Is everything going to come through crystal clear? No. I've already, and I'm thankful, there have been a few men already that have challenged me with some areas in my ministry. You know what? I'm honored that they would be bold enough to say, hey, have you thought about this? There are many of you in this room, you've been in the ministry, you've been serving in a church longer than I've been alive. Yes, I just did the same thing that Travis did. I called you old. <laughs> and you know what? I am humbled to the fact that you would even come and sit and listen to me share God's word. And you've seen people make mistakes. Can I tell you tonight, as, as Paul is telling these things to Timothy, do you know Timothy was not just to set them up, but he went back later, and what did he do? He went back to the churches later to help encourage them and grow them and build them. And what, he, what did he need to do? He needed to make sure the pastor was still, stand, still staying by the stuff, right? We desire to be a church that honors God, right? Well, the only way we'll be a church that honors God is if we help each other stay by the stuff. And I'm expecting you to hold me, to hold Brian, to hold Travis, to hold our deacons to the stuff. See, I almost got into the next passage because the next passage, I was going to pick on the deacons. I decided I'd wait another week. It's going to give them a week, a week head start. And don't you be calling in sick next week, guys. They're all going to miss next week. 
You're like, huh, what? Oh, oh, I'm out of town again, sorry. No. In the day and age we live in, and so many churches falling by the wayside, so many pastors falling by the wayside, so many young men striving to serve God. I, on behalf of me and, and the other guys on staff and the deacons, I'm begging you, hold us to the stuff. Hold us to the stuff. Hold us to the standards found in God's Word. Love on us, but protect us too. Teach us. Guard us. Give us the benefit of the doubt sometimes, please. There's a lot of requirements on us right here. There's a lot of requirements on each one of us found in the Word of God, but specifically here to the leadership of the church, there's a lot of requirements. And can I tell you, I guarantee I mess up at least... Ten of them. I, I guarantee I mess up on something. I've already, I told you when we first came on staff here that I would offend you. I, I, would, I would do something wrong and offend you or say something wrong and offend you. and Prayerfully, not unbiblically, but just in the way I say something, the way I do something. Listen, I'm begging you, help us save us stuff. I'm, I, by giving you my, what as a pastor, as, as, uh, as we serve, uh, what we're required, I'm telling you, look, I'm giving you full authority based on the word of God to come to me, to come to Brian, to come to Travis and say, it's right here. That's your responsibility. Do you know that? Your responsibility is to help us stay right, to do the right thing. To make the right decisions. To seek wise counsel. To do things the Bible way. Why are churches closing all around us? Because people aren't, preachers aren't staying by the stuff. And churches are letting them do it. Churches are just saying, okay. There have been a lot of churches where, well, we just let the pastor do what he thought was right even though it didn't make any sense whatsoever. Financially, physically, anything. It better be biblical. Tonight, you have a responsibility. I have, I have a responsibility. Brian, has, Brian, Travis, we all have a responsibility. We have a, tra a responsibility here. You have a responsibility to us, and that is keep us in the book. Make sure we stay by the book. Just as you would a friend, just as you would somebody else in this church. Where Matthew chapter 18, if they offend you, if they trespass against you, you go to them and you talk to them. And you tell them what's wrong. What they did. Don't bring a scroll when you come to meet with me, okay? You probably fill one up, but don't bring it. One at a time. I can only work on one thing at a time. But I'm thankful this morning, like I said, this morning we, we had a, a large group of, of first responders tonight. We have a few in the audience. And I'm, I'm thankful that you, don't, you, you didn't serve and you don't serve alone. Because I, you wouldn't be here tonight had you served alone. You wouldn't be here tonight if you were serving alone right now. Simply put, they go into harm's way. And every day we walk into harm's way together, do we not? Let's, let's bind together as a church. And hold each other to the book. Look, I, I, Brian and I, we talked, and uh, this was a while back, we were talking and he said, you know, uh, I'll be real before everybody. He says, I, I just don't think you're giving enough attention to soul winning. He didn't say it in, uh, in an ugly way. He didn't say it in an aggravated way.
He just said, Brother Keith, and he didn't recognize some other things I was doing, but it still didn't give me an excuse for, that, for, for Saturday morning specifically. Look, he wasn't being offensive. What was he trying to do? Build a relationship. Bridge a relationship between us. And what did we do? We talked it out. We figured it out. He then recognized maybe what I was doing at a different time. Not offensive. To win the brother back. That's what we all must be doing here. But can I challenge you? Get into God's Word and find passages like this and hold each other to it. And by all means, hold us to it. Hold us to it. You have a responsibility tonight, Brother Ron. Brother Don, Brother Thomas, Brother Reed, Brother Brian. We all have a responsibility to each other. To make sure we're in the Word of God and we're helping each other to live the best way we can to serve God. You want this church to grow? You want us to be profitable in the fact of souls saved and, and, and people won back to Christ and, and brought to Christ? Let's all get together in the book. Enough said. Every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. It's impossible to hold somebody to the book, to the Word of God, if you don't know the Word of God. Maybe you don't know the Word of God because you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Tonight, if you don't know Him as your personal Lord and Savior, I invite you, I beg of you, allow us to take the Word of God and show you how you can know Christ is your personal Savior. We'll have an old-fashioned invitation here in just a minute. Music will play. Brother Ron will begin to sing. And Christians, if you know the song, sing it with him. But if you don't know Christ, I invite you to, to step out. Come to this altar. Let us, let us take God's Word show you how you can know for sure your sins are forgiven. Christian, tonight, what is our job for each other? What's our, our job to do? Here, we must... Hold each other to the Word of God in love, in desperation to, to do all we can for the cause of Christ right now. Have you been doing all you can? Are there those around you that you've seen fall, you've seen fail, and you've done nothing to help them? Are there those around you that, that, uh, that you've not even encouraged? We call ourselves a church. Church is where you come and you get comfort, you get encouragement. You're taught to grow in the Word of God. May we do that together. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let's stand to our feet as the music begins to play. Has God spoken to your heart? If He has, would you come to this altar? Would you deal with the Lord face to face, if you will? Would you come on your knees? Say, Lord, help me.